Hey guys, in this video I talk to Remnote. Uh, we talk about some of the features that they have with a focus on space repetition and uh, we do touch a little bit on how you can use Remnote uh, for knowledge management and uh, a bit about where they're going uh, for their product development uh, in terms of the features that they're working on. Um, I do apologize in advance for the very poor uh, audio quality. The internet connection was pretty bad, um, but I hope that you'll still get some value from uh, this video. Enjoy it. So whenever I type a colon anywhere, um, anything before that colon will become the front of my flashcard and anything after it will become the back of my flashcard. So the front is the prompt and the back is the answer. And I could go check what that flashcard would look like um, just by hovering down here. Uh, in your queue, this would show up as two cards. One would be the one on the left, the other would be the one on the right. Um, and that's kind of all similar to other space repetition tools that you might have seen. Um, the kind of key aspect where remote shines with space repetition is helping you to connect your ideas uh, and grow your knowledge over time while easily making flashcards. So if, for example, I was in some sort of like lecture one document here, or I don't know, some biology lecture or something, because I'm able to take notes in this hierarchical format, rather than organizing every flashcard around sort of a question and answer, um, I can organize my notes around the concepts themselves that I'm trying to learn. So the kind of traditional way to do this might be like adding questions like, what is DNA? Um, and adding some answer to that. In RevNote, you would instead do something, uh, well, you could do it this way, it's totally fine, but an easier way to do this would be to just create what's uh, called a rem for a DNA and then give it your definition here, so something, so on. And then uh, once you've added like your one sentence explanation here, then add more knowledge around that idea by breaking it down into smaller parts by adding more bullets beneath it. So maybe, for example, I want to know um, how, uh, how synthesized or how is DNA synthesized? Um, or what, what are the nucleic acids, right? Um, or like the problem being solved by DNA, why it exists. And each of these will turn into their own flashcard, of course. If I were to look at this one, for example, here, you could see that I have my full context. I have lecture one, I have DNA, and I have the question of how DNA synthesized. Um, and basically, as you're trying to learn something, you can try to go through and break things down into concepts and automatically generate flashcards from each of these. Uh, any flashcard that you create in any document can then be practiced in a few different ways. One way would be to just go to your queue, which has your cards from every single um, document you have kind of shuffled together. Uh, there's another option, which would be to go to, for example, a single folder. For example, I could go to this classes folder here. There's a few different ways to do that. So yeah, the main kind of summary is that to get started, all you really need to do is figure out what you want your prompt to be and what your, what your answer to be, uh, put a colon in between, and then possibly break things down um, using these hard Google bullet points. Um, and then I guess the final thing I'll say is it's because you can make references between ideas, as you're building up these sort of like knowledge flashcard trees, you can also, so here I just wrote out nucleic acid, but maybe that's actually an idea I've already used else, elsewhere. So instead I could try to make a reference to that, nucleic acid, uh, apparently that one's new. Um, but now, now if I were to ever type nucleic acid again in the PI, automatically drawing connections between my ideas. Yeah. Um, that kind of quick overview, Spark, any questions on your side? Uh, okay, so, um... So what does the what does the extra sub bullet point do? So does that so um, on the on the where, where you've got prompt and then answer and then you've got uh, two yeah and then does that what is the yeah that extra that 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 extra layering does that do do something? Um, yeah yeah. So here these bullet points are not creating any flashcards because they don't have colons. Um, so here, these would just kind of be for extra notes that I wanted to remember that weren't necessarily a part of a flashcard. Maybe like some caveat about the above or something. I'm not sure. Right. But then, um, okay. So then, if you if I, when you open the flashcard, where those will those bullet points show just on at the bottom of the flashcard or something, or 
or it wouldn't show anywhere at all. It just it uh, would just show on the. Uh, yeah, these would not appear on the flashcard itself. Gotcha. Um, there is sort of a way to uh, add children bullet points to your parent flashcard if you want. Um, well, if I'm writing a list, maybe like a, for here, what have been nucleic acids? Here I could make then a list of answers, um, which is uh, like I could type out their names here. And then the flashcard would contain all of those, um, all of those bullet points. Um, but part of the reason for not including the answers here on the flashcard is that the tool is designed to help you kind of interweave your flashcards with the rest of your notes for the purpose of making uh, it easier to create the flashcards. So you could be in your lecture just kind of taking normal prose notes if that's the way that you like to do things, um, writing down whatever you want, and then on the following line just immediately you find some definition for yourself, for example. Uh, so these things can really be interlinked right next to each other. I see. And, um... And then, so where you've uh, created the uh, nucleic acid, um, right now, if you reference that here, and then if you reference that in other pages, do they all? F it does it work the same way as Rome, where it come, all the references come up in the same section? And then, if that's the case, can you also have testing just across that specific topic area? So, for example, if you wanted just to be tested on uh, a subtopic, which is DNA in this case then uh, is there a way to, 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 to test only that? Yeah, yeah. So first let me just show that if I were to then go into lecture two um, and also make some reference here, something about nucleic acids, then if we were, I were to open up nucleic acid, um, then I would have these references from both documents in here, right? Um, then maybe let's say that I go back to my original lecture one document here. Here. If I only wanted to test myself to DNA, um, and then using this menu up here, I could only practice REM that are relevant to DNA. This would be a very precise kind of cue. Um, something that you might want to do more broadly, my lectures, and drag them down into this folder just to keep things organized. Um, and uh, oops. Uh, and now that I have everything in this biology folder, I could just click on this only practice biology button right here. Um, and then this would just go through the different kind of biology cards that I have and only test myself on those. I see. And then uh, is it possible to, um, so like, can you embed things? So can you embed media files, audio, video into, into the flashcards? Um, you can paste links to things. You can't embed it directly quite yet. Uh, this is definitely something that we are considering adding, though. So what kind of media would you like to embed? Like, is this something that's already hosted online somewhere, or you want to upload audio, or something uh, else? Yeah, both cases. So, uh, so, um, so, for example, if you're learning a language, then having certain conversations that reference that phrase or word uh, might be in there, uh, just to give an idea of the context. So, for example, uh, if um, if I wanted a flashcard where uh, certain phrases uh, in audio form, then that'd be useful. So that's that's one thing. And then another thing is uh, for things that are already online, um, like lectures and uh, YouTube videos. Uh, then uh, will be. This is not as so. The, I'd say the, for me, the first one will be more important. But the second one uh, is uh, if I'm. I, I tend to make a lot of summary notes about um, on videos, and yeah. uh, and uh, and if it's just an inline embed, uh, it would mean that I don't have to keep two tabs uh, flicking back and forth between two tabs or having the screen split in half, so that. I can just you know click on the thing as I'm going through it, and then ideally I can freeze it in that position as well, so that as I'm adding notes down the line, then uh, I can keep on you know pausing and playing while I'm taking the notes. And uh, and then uh, the third thing I I mean, which is a bit another nice to have, will be um, if I'm taking notes against a video that if this thing can record at which point in time I took the notes uh, for so that 
uh, if it's not so that if I so that I don't need to do a plain pause, I can just do do it in one you know one sweep. And then later on, when I'm reading the notes again, if something's not clear, I can click on that section of the video or the audio, and then I can be like, oh, okay, well, this is not actually what what they were trying to say. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, that's all really good feedback. Let me show you two things. So first, my question is: so right now, there's a way that I could uh, take an image, just copy its URL, um, and paste that right into the tool. If we had some similar thing for embedding web audio, would that be useful or yes. not so much because it has to be online? Uh, well, so I mean, so so when you say a similar way to embed the audio, how would that audio appear? Would it would would it actually would it be playing on the page? Yeah. So maybe um, we there could be an option where I just embed it and there's like a kind of a name here, and then when I open the card. Uh, for that RAM, it could automatically start playing the audio. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that that'd be really useful. Yes. Okay, great. Uh, I can write that down on our roadmap. Um, and then the second thing, I would love your thoughts on. Um, sorry, one second. I'm gonna have to open a different tab for this. So okay, so we actually are about to uh, release a uh, beta version of an extension, a uh, Chrome extension which lets you do something that's a first step towards what you were talking about. Can you see this here? Yes. Um, so this is not uh, perfected on YouTube yet, um, but this is a Chrome extension that oh, lets me open my RemNote tab right in the sidebar here. Um, and we're going to fix this up to shift over the video. Uh, so then like I could take notes as this video is playing in the background, for example. Um, would this like solve part of your embedded video request or? Oh yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that that that, okay, that, cool. that that would definitely make a big difference. Um, great, great. Yeah, yeah. No, I think that's really cool that you're doing that. Nice. Okay. And then yeah, in the future we totally then, want to do things of like yeah. linking to the current video time point. The way that I open this might be a sort of show. All I have to do is click the uh, remote button up here and then click open document, um, and then it, it'll just pull the page up. Uh, here, so it seems to be taking a second right now. Yeah, um, and this is a full editor. Gotcha. Uh, okay, so when you, when you, you so, when, so when you so when you load the uh, yes, yeah, I'll just so when you load the page, uh, does it uh, so it does it add the YouTube link by itself, and then at the title is that the title that you put in there, or is that the title is just sort of grabbed by itself? Right, right. So this is automatically grabbed. Gotcha. Um, and then this can, ideally should actually be yeah, this, right, yeah. but this is still beta. Yeah. <laughs> gotcha. And then, and then uh, when you, and then you can modify that, right? Oh, totally. Yeah. Uh, and then, uh, and then it, 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 it's coming under the subcategory of links. Is that done automatically? Uh, and the like the top level, the top level folder is under links. Right. Is that right? Would that, um, so this is, yeah. Um, so when you're just, when you first open, when you first use this extension, it'll yeah. just stick it under links automatically. Right. And I could just see the other <laughs> ones that we've been testing this with. Yeah. Um, but then of course I could go, uh, and, uh, move this to anywhere else that I want. Gotcha. Oh, it'll be in the biology folder. Right. Okay, cool. And so right now, uh, that means that you can do all the referencing and everything else, uh, natively. It'll be, it, it'll be the same thing. Oh yeah, yeah. So I could go and, and pull back in that like nucleic, uh, or this is a different account, uh, but I could go and pull the nucleic acid yep. uh, that we made before and, and so on. Gotcha. Okay, cool. Just out of curiosity, so then, so uh, on Remno generally, so just like outside of uh, the this, the the YouTube thing, can you uh, like, is there is it also um, does it have the features for like to do lists and things like that? So having uh, having um, Having checklists, having the having uh, a, sort of a, a way to manage uh, projects. In other words, um, can you see on a on a uh, to, to design something on a weekly basis so that you can check things off as you do things? So, for example, you, like some habits that you need to do, and some you know like whatever work that needs to be fulfilled, and so on and so forth. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, for example, here maybe. Uh, for today, I want to have my to-do list. I can click this create a document with today's date button. That'll pull this up. And then I can jump into to-do mode by just typing slash to-do. 
um, and then start generating my to-dos for today. Uh, these are checkable, as you said. Um, if I want, I can also tag things more precisely. So maybe I want to tag this as urgent. So I could create a rem or a tag uh, called urgent here. Um, maybe I want this to actually be red, so I can go uh, change that color really fast. Uh, oops, sorry, this thing's in the way. Uh, yeah, okay, so I can go change that to red, um, and that tag will be red everywhere. Um, I could also then maybe for other things that I've tagged as urgent, I could go uh, zoom into this to see the does thing it, that I tagged as urgent. Does, does, it, need um, to, does it need to yeah. be, so right now you put it on the daily docs, can that be under like a yearly, weekly, like does it need to be specified to today? Oh yeah, you can do this anywhere. Oh, um, gotcha. okay. So you could set up your total own total system here, yeah. Okay. Uh, and uh, and then you can have multiple tags, I assume. So you can do urgent, and you can also have, for example, like ones for you know for for language, and other ones for science, whatever. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So if you so like on a day on a day to day basis, I have the same list of things that are constant that I want to be filling out uh, every day. Uh, is there what's the easiest way to have that? get repeated. So for example, every day I want to log, you know, like how many hours of sleep that I got and, you know, um, and I know that for sure I want to have written a post for the day or whatever. And so those things stay constant um, as a daily to do, right? Is there a way for repetitive things to be, to, to, to get easily either, either copy and pasted, but, uh, but, or, or just to have them come up sort of um, easily? There's not a kind of automatic repeating task built in right now. Yep. Um, you could partially set something up like this uh, as the tag is daily. Every day I just go and import uh, the full list of stuff that's uh, tagged as daily. Uh, but that um, is not such a first class feature quite yet. Gotcha. Cool. At what stage is this uh, at now? Like, so, like, is the uh, in terms of like the roadmap and stuff? Like, what's the what are the immediate things that's going to be sort of added? Sure, sure. Um, so, the for example, in a few days, there's uh, a new feature coming out um, that makes cards as multiple and slightly more medium term stuff for mobile apps, um, more space repetition organization. Uh, and more knowledge organization features like the uh, longest term roadmap is the knowledge base that you're building in a tool throughout your life and with other people. Um, so mobile apps are part of this, but the vision is also kind of a more persistent, uh, access, more persistently accessible knowledge base that you can access, for example, on any web page um, where you can share your REM and notes and ideas with other people and combine them in a robust way. Um, so that might be, sorry, that might've been a little vague. I guess the two main prongs I would think about are more space repetition features and more knowledge organization features. Okay, cool. Um, yeah. Hello. For us as well. It, 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 oh, sorry. Cut out for a second there. Yeah. Yeah. It keeps on cutting out here and there. So <laughs> yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. I, I really appreciate it. And, uh, thanks for, thanks for the time. Cool. Yeah, for sure. All right. Okay. See ya. Cool. See ya.